And what is what needs to improve in order to make it reusable? Like, what is what's wrong with it right now? Uh, on the shift side, the the toughest problem is the heat shield. Good morning, and welcome to what should be the day of Starship Flight Eight. I recorded this the night before because I wanted to give you a summary of what we're looking for with this eighth flight of Starship, as well as talk about the heat tiles in particular. This is because Elon Musk recently went back on the Joe Rogan experience and he talked in depth about the heat shield and the heat tiles on Starship and why solving this issue will really put us one step closer to full and rapid reusability. So Flight 8 of Starship is composed of Super Heavy Booster 15 and Ship 34. This is the second time that we've seen a Block 2 upper stage in action. We know what happened the first time with Ship 33 in the RUD or Rapid Unscheduled Disassembly or Explosion, basically. So hopefully this Block 2 upper stage actually has a chance to shine this time around. And that's because there were some key objectives that weren't even attempted, of course, on the last launch because, well, it died and exploded and rip. So what are we looking for on this flight? Well, we are, of course, looking for another booster catch back at the launch site. So we're hoping that Super Heavy Booster 15 will return and be caught by the launch tower's chopstick arms after separation. And this is something that we've already seen in flights five and seven. So if SpaceX nails this, this will be the third catch ever of a booster. Now, we also want to have Ship 34 have a successful payload deployment, and the goal is to deploy four Starlink simulators testing satellite deployment for the first time. We're also planning to see another relight of one Raptor engine in space. SpaceX has already done that, but this is important to retest because this is what we need to have orbital capability. And of course, let's talk about the reentry test for Ship 34. This will stress test the ship's heat shield, which does have fewer tiles, new metallic tile options, and flap redesigns to improve re-entry durability. Which, by the way, I should add that the mishap investigation actually remains open after Flight 7. So the FAA let us know that after completing the required and comprehensive safety review, the FAA determined the SpaceX Starship vehicle can return to flight operations while the investigation into the January 16th Starship Flight 7 mishap remains open. The FAA is overseeing the SpaceX-led investigation. So basically, the FAA issued a license modification authorizing the SpaceX Starship Flight 8 launch. So just to clarify that the mishap investigation remains open, but luckily the FAA is giving this modification so that SpaceX can continue to do these tests and get us closer to full and rapid reusability. So the flight plan for this next flight, Flight 8, is still that suborbital trajectory, not reaching orbit yet. But hopefully they'll be able to do it on the next flight. And Ship 34 will be splashing down in the Indian Ocean west of Australia. So what are the upgrades from Flight 7? Well, there have been fixes for harmonic vibration and propellant leaks that doomed Ship 33. There's also new vents in a nitrogen purge system in the attic area to prevent fires. SpaceX also tested a very long 60-second static fire of Ship 34 on February 11th. And so recently, like I said, Joe Rogan just dropped this Elon Musk interview and really kind of picks his brain about these heat tiles and why they've been so problematic and what Elon thinks that SpaceX can do to solve the problem. Like what, what comes after this? I mean, the fundamental breakthrough we're aiming for at SpaceX is a fully and rapidly reusable orbital rocket where both stages are fully and rapidly reusable. So what has to improve in order to make it reusable? Like we're pretty close to being able to re rapidly reuse the booster for Starship. Um, that's why you know it, it comes back and gets caught by the arms and then the arms place it back in the launch mount. We have a little bit of engine damage, we got a little bit of heat shield damage. Like there's like tweaks that that are needed, but but the but we're pretty close to achieving full and rapid reusability of the of the booster. I think we'll achieve reusability of the ship this year, um, and I think we'll achieve rapid reusability of the whole stack 
chip and booster next year. This is the fundamental breakthrough required for life to become multiplanetary. And what is what needs to improve in order to make it reusable? Like what is what's wrong with it right now? Uh, on the shift side, the the toughest problem is the heat shield. So no no one has actually no one has ever developed a fully reusable orbital heat shield because you come, when you come in from orbital velocity, you come in like a flaming meteor, like you're just a r raging ball of fire, um, and it's it's hard to have a heat shield that doesn't partially melt or get destroyed in that process. Um, you know, that, that wasn't a problem we were able to solve with Falcon 9. That's why the upper stage uh, it burns up on reentry. Um, with, with Starship, the, 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 sh the ship portion, you got the, sh the booster and you got the ship. Um, we got to solve the uh, making a fully reusable orbital heat shield, a problem that has never been solved before. Um, for a while there, I was like, mm, I'm not sure there's, this is solvable. At this point, I think it is solvable. It requires detailed iteration on the heat shield tiles. And I mean, we've vertically integrated the manufacturing of the heat shield tiles because there, there was no supplier that could provide us with the materials that were needed. You, you need to make essentially this, this very fine vermicelli of, of glass and aluminum oxide uh, fibers. Aluminum oxide is basically sapphire. So it's like gla glass and sapphire, very fine fibers in exactly the right geometry uh, with special coatings in order to have the th this heat shield tile be reusable, um, like not melt, um, and but not be so brittle that it gets damaged um, on ascent or descent. You know, it's, it's kind of like re almost the brittleness of a coffee cup type of mm. thing. Um, and the rocket's shaking like hell. So you got this thing like, sh you, you, you saw it firsthand. Like, mm -hmm. imagine you're at ground zero of that rocket. Like, you feel how much shaking it was when you're like five miles away. Imagine if you're right there, you know? So you got, you're, you're shaking these things that are like as brittle as a coffee cup, trying not to have them crack or break, um, and then ha not have them melt. Um, you've got several, th several thousand of these things, you know, and, and if even a few of them break, uh, it's not reusable. So is there innovation that's being done in the materials technology yeah. at SpaceX where you're, you're constantly trying to find and tweak a better version of this? Yes. And it's a very difficult problem. No, it's a problem no one has ever solved. So we've got to get the exact right uh, materials combination, the, the right molecules in the right shape, and, and then apply those that heat shield perfectly to the rocket with no mistakes. Um, there's a reason that no one solved this before. It's a very difficult problem. And like I so said, we ha we've had to vertically integrate the entire manufacturing of the tile from basic raw materials to a finished tile. Rebuild, like build the entire supply chain from basic raw materials. So we're, you're just inputting silicon, uh, silicon and aluminum oxides. And what is the difference between the way you guys do it versus the way they used to do it for the space shuttle? I mean, the, the, the space shuttle... Um, like the space shuttle leading edge uh, used quite dense carbon carbon tiles. Like it was, um, they're like basically thick and heavy, uh, but also subject to cracking. Uh, like, I mean, the full, exp the full technical explanation would, 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 I think, be understood by about six people um, <laughs> listening to this. Um, like the, the, there was a lot of brilliant engineering in the space shuttle tiles. Um, and and and, so, and a bunch of the heat shielding wasn't even tiles; it was actually uh, silica blankets, like you know, um, felt blankets essentially. Um, if you look closely, you'll see it actually is uh, they're actually heat blankets, not not tiles in in some areas. Um, but but they they would have cracked tiles, and they would have occasionally the tiles would fall off. There were a few close calls uh, where tiles fell off, but they weren't in a super vulnerable position. Uh, in the on the space shuttle, so it, it, but it would take it would take them several months, like eight nine months, to refurbish a space shuttle between each flight. So it was it was it was not reusable, really, um, and and it was, certainly wasn't rapid. Like I said, a very, very hard problem. Uh, you've you've got to have you you've also got to atta sort of attach the tiles in a way that en en enables the the structure underneath to move. Uh, to expand and contract, oh. um, even though you've got these very rigid tiles, that the tanks, which take on cryogenic propellant, 
will contract when you put in the cryogenic propellant, but then when you come in and you get very hot, they will expand. So now you're, you're expanding the you're contracting and expanding the gap between these rigid tiles. But um, how much? Uh, it varies depending on where you are on the sh on the on the vehicle. So if you're in the if you're in the cryogenic tank section, I mean you can see like a 10 20 percent difference in the gap. Um, really, it's pretty significant. Yeah, it, it's it's enough that you can't just put all the tile. You can't just jam the tiles together. If you if you put them up to, if you if you actually butted, butted them up, um, they would they would all crack. Because it's, there's too much movement. There's there's also some amount of body bending, so as the the ship is like ascending, uh, you know when the when the engines steer, the, the, it, there's a little bit of movement. Um, and so if if the tiles are too close together, they they'll they'll essentially just crack and snap. Like you, how you plane, have to have a gap. Like how planes. Yeah, wings. like a plane wing will move. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plane body will move too. Wow. And so how you, ha you, you have to have some gap, but if you have too much of a gap, then the 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 heat gets gets to the you know gets gets past the the tile and uh, melts the stru the structure. Holy, sh it's a hard problem. It's, you can't like three D print the whole thing. You can't have one structure. It has to no. be tiles because it has to have that ability to move. Well, there's no three D printer that's. I mean, the biggest w ones are like maybe th th three feet. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's no you, you you can't three D print it. You have to have something that can move. Right. Uh, it has to be able to, fle to flex. You're putting in li liquid oxygen, which is like minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Actually, we, we, we subcool it to you know, minus 330 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it's very cold. And then it will be several hundred degrees, maybe 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit potentially when on reentry. So you get this huge temperature swing. So the, the thermal expansion is substantial. And the whole, and, and you got thermal expansion and contraction combined with body bending. So you have to take the worst case body bending and thermal expansion contraction. This was a very hard problem. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this recap. Thanks so much for tuning in to Ellie in Space. Hopefully, you're able to catch my live stream live of the Starship launch. And thanks so much for supporting my channel. It is truly amazing that I get to do this full time. So if you like my channel, please subscribe. It's free and I'll see you in the next video. I also have some brand new merch that just dropped, including a sequel to our best-selling shirt, the Mechazilla shirt, with this time Mechazillas, as you can see, and then also this Explore Mars shirt. So please, if you wanna support my channel and have an awesome t-shirt, I will leave the link in the description of this video and pinned in the comments. Thanks so much, everyone.